This is the World of Sports Network. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U, the voice of the NFL. Welcome to another World of Sports Network presentation. And today we'll be talking about the 2020 Dallas Cowboys off-season needs. And now let me give you guys the table of content of what to expect, all right, in this presentation. So we're gonna talk about the 2019 recap of the Cowboys season, and then we're gonna hit the 2020 off season. We're gonna hit the key departures, we're gonna hit the key arrivals, and then we're gonna end up with the draft needs as well as the draft targets. And then I summarize everything. So with that said, you all might as well go down, and subscribe, you done? Now, let's roll the tape. The 2019 Dallas Cowboys season started very turbulence, man. Uh, with Ezekiel Elliott holding out in training camp early in the season, early in training camp for his extension for his contract, that caused the, camp, the, the season to already start on a, on a different note. So with that said, the end of the Cowboys end up going eight and eight, which was second in the division, and they failed to make the playoff. Obviously, that's not what Jerry wanted because coming to the season, there was high, high expectation for the Cowboys, but they fell short of that expectation. And that, with that said, head coach Jason Garrett became the casualty because of the mediocrity. And Jason Garrett leaving the Cowboys after ten years. End up with that 85 and 67 overall record, um, which is a which is not a bad. That's a winning record, which is not bad, man. It's a 55 percent winning record, which is essentially um, uh, you win one every three games, or in a sense, what Jerry Jones saw it as. Um, Jason Garrett lost one every other game, so that didn't make sense. So that's why Jerry um, practiced social distancing from. Jason Garrett and delivered the bad news and moved on uh, from Jason Garrett. And when they moved on, they moved on and it was a, it was an upgrade, not a major upgrade, but enough for upgrade. Mike McCarthy from Jerry from Jason Garrett. Mike McCarthy now is 125 and 77 career record, which is a 61% record, which is an upgrade coming from obviously previous guy Jerry um, Jason Garrett. So in a sense. Mike McCarthy wins two out of, I'm rounding up now, two out of three games as Jerry sees it, he, lo he loses one, or as Jerry sees it, he only loses one out of every three games, which essentially is an upgrade considering where they just come from. So now, let's transition to the 2000 offseason moves and let's focus on the key departures from the Cowboys. The Cowboys lost Byron Jones, the staple corner over there to the Miami Dolphins in a mega deal. Byron Jones was a five-year guy in Dallas. In my opinion, he was not an impactful type of guy. Yeah, he got his money. To me, he was lacking the impactful play. I don't remember watching any highlights or thinking of a highlight from Byron Jones. Another key departure, I think that's um, from the Cowboys was Robert Quinn, defensive end. Now, Robert Quinn actually led them in sacks last year with 11 and a half sacks. Yes, it was in Demarcus Lawrence. The terrible defensive line was um, led by Robert Quinn, and now he's gone. So that's another key, key departure. Moved on to um, Randall Cobb. Now, people might not realize, Randall Cobb had a sneakily, sneakily, sneaky good season last season, man. This slot receiver ended up with 55 reception. Right, 55 or 7, which was, I believe, about third on the team or so. And also with um, 828 yards, 828 and 3 TDs. So that's going to be missed as far as the inside slot receivers. Randall Cup really made some big plays on the low last year. And obviously, Travis um, Frederick leaving with the with his virus, with the with, with his battle for the for his disease he got going on. It's unfortunate. He got sees up. He got the HOF type of ability, but obviously his career is cut short because of that battle he's fighting for, for basically his life in a sense, man. Um, so those were the major departures from the Dallas Cowboys. So now let's transition into the arrived Bulls, man. Um, the Cowboys, I'm really, I, I give it to the Joneses, man. They did a very good job as far as identifying key 
key weaknesses as far as the defense and the team and the defense, especially the defensive line. The middle of the defensive line, it's, they were soft. Let's just be real. So coming to arrivals, come Jared McCoy, the five-time All-Pro, coming in, um, the former Tampa Bay Bucks, Carolina Panthers, coming with loads of experience uh, from the interior offensive line with a career sacks of 59.5 career sacks, bringing all that in the interior line in the Cowboys. So they compound that with Don Terry or Poe. Man, Pro bring that depth, man. He brings that beef to the line, that big time ox tail beef in the, in, in the front line. So because the Cowboys were soft as, uh, they were soft as charms, charms, man. They were softer than charms toilet tissue last year in the defensive line, man, it's, it's depth, especially in the, in the middle. So right now, with the addition and infusion of Gerald McCord and the Terry Poe, man, they ain't soft no more, man. Those boys got those are those are those are some hard, 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 hard nosed guys in the middle of that defense. Um, I like Aha Dixon because I'm not a Cowboys fan and I think he sucks, but I like it for them. He's better than um, Heath, who they had. He's um, Aha Dixon. He's really his last couple of seasons. He played like his name. Aha. To be honest with you, he's been laughing. And one of the new things that just happened that's brewing is Arden Smith. Now, Jerry Jones is taking a big gamble. Well, we heard that before on a player that has personal issues, put it like that. Um, they have personal issues. So, But if Jerry Jones gamble, pay off, man, imagine having Poe, McCoy, Lawrence, Arden Smith in the defensive line. Man, that is a very, very disruptive defensive line. If, and the big if, the gamble pay off. Because Jerry is, man, he's doing a big gamble right here with those type of guys on his team. But, hey, that's Jerry Jones, man. He loves those type of gambles. Now, let's move on to the Cowboys' need as far as the draft, going into the draft. So, obviously, Cowboys have... I'm, I'm going to focus on the first three rounds. They have the first round pick, second round pick, and the third round pick. First round is 17th overall pick. So these are the key needs in the, as far as the draft. The draft. They need a secondary. I'm from corners of safety. Number one target is a secondary, in my opinion. Number two target is the defensive line. I know they got Poe and McCoy, but they need to. Those guys are in their 30s, man. They need to infuse a younger guys there to learn underneath those guys. And to end that, they need a guy to replace um, Randall Cobb. They need an inside receiver. Obviously, Witten also left. They need an inside receiver to replace him. So those are the three targets. The Cowboys are need a target going into the, the draft coming in at the end of this month. Now, let me talk about the prospects that I believe will fit perfectly in Dallas. So we're going to start with their first round pick in the secondary. I think it's simple. Those guys got to stay in Alabama. Uh, I think it's either going to be Trayvon Diggs or Xavier McKinney. It just makes sense. The Cowboys secondary don't make plays. They don't make no type of plays. They, um, Byron Jones had two picks basically in five years. They're not playmakers. You have the ability to get Trayvon Diggs, a 6'2", man-on-man type corners that make playmaking abilities. That's his, 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 his basically his best days are ahead of him. He just switched to that position. Last year, ended up with three INTs and one to the touch, one to the house. Now, that's a playmaker. And then in the back end, you look at the safety, Xavier McKinney. I call him an intermediate safety. His strength is intermediate. I don't consider him in a box. I don't want to put him in that level. He's an intermediate. He can stick in the immediate routes and then all the way in, in, within the line of scrimmage. Also, another playmaker with three INT and one to the crib. I think those are the first round target right in the secondary. The Cowboys need to get infused on their team. Now, move to the second round. They have to have, they have, to have a defensive lineman, preferably a D tackle, to get in that rotation. And you don't have to go, you don't even have to leave the state. You got to go to T Texas Christian, TCU, Russ Blaylock, Blaylock, the big defensive tackle right there, man. You know, the run stuffer. He will fit perfectly right there to learn underneath Poe as well as Gerald McCoy. I think that's a round two no-brainer. Now round three, you need something to, you need something to replace Randall Cobb. And look no further again. Stay in your state. Don't even leave your state. This is an easy pick for him. SMU wide receiver James Roche. This dude catches everything. He'll be an instant number one day one upgrade at the slot position, man. At the slot position. James Roche from SMU. Those are the targets right there, the Cowboys. They infuse those three guys in their team and their core team they already have right now. 
the Cowboys are scared. They're going to be scary. So in conclusion, the Cowboys are not very far away from achieving what they want to achieve as far as winning the division, as far as going deep in the playoff. They handle the contractual situation they need to take care of, which they will. I'm not going to get too much into it. And they get the draft players that I believe they should get. And Jerry hit on the gamble. Look for the Cowboys to be a significant player as far as the NFC East division and maybe the whole entire NFC. Y'all know the drill. Like this. Love this. Share this. And I am out.